In today's lecture, we're going to go more in depth in how to model the incompressible flow over 2D airfoils. And also get into finite wing modeling. Most of the material today is again going to be a review, but we're going to go more into detail on how to use panel methods to solve for 2D airfoil flow, um, some of which will be new material for you. So overall, this is covering 4.7. Four point twelve and five point one to five point three point one of Anderson, which was the ending point for the parts of the course uh, aerospace engineering fundamentals that covered that was covered in Anderson's book. So last time you'll recall we noted that there were two ways to use uh, vortex sheet solutions to model the flow over the potential flow over an airfoil. One was a vortex panel method where the vortices are distributed on the airfoil surface. The other was thin airfoil theory. Where we simulate the airfoil with a vortex sheet on the camera line. To do this, we essentially follow the, use the following procedure. First, we calculate the local sheet strength gamma of S so that the camber line of the airfoil is a streamline of the flow. Second, we need to satisfy the cutter condition so that the strength at the trailing edge must be zero. And then finally, uh, third, we calculate the circulation by integrating along the vortex sheet the local strengths. And finally, we can get the lift per unit span using the cutter Joukowsky theorem. So, starting with our uh, vortex sheet on the camber line, which might look something like this, each of these dots representing uh, an infinitesimal vortex. So this camber line has some equation z equals z of x. The s direction is along the camber. And there may be some v infinity coming in at angle of attack alpha. Uh, this goes from zero to the chord. So that this is the chord line and this is the camber line. Now, for a thin airfoil, the camber line is not very far from the chord line. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can imagine that in fact, we might be able to neglect the effects of the camber line and instead distribute the vortices along the chord line. Now we're still making the camber line a streamline of the flow. For a symmetric airfoil, We can basically treat this thin airfoil as a flat plate 
and can show analytically that CL is 2 pi alpha. So this 2 pi is the lift slope, A naught. CL is just defined as the lift per unit span over 1 half rho v squared chord. And this is in radians. Angle of attack. The moment coefficient about the leading edge is negative CL over 4. And about the quarter chord point is 0. So therefore, the quarter chord is both the center of pressure and the aerodynamic center for a symmetric airfoil uh, under the assumptions of thin airfoil theory. Whereas for a cambered airfoil, such as the one that was shown here, we get a more complicated expression. CL is 2 pi alpha plus 1 over pi, interval from 0 to pi, dz dx. cos theta naught minus 1, d theta naught. So again, we see that the lift slope is 2 pi. And com the difference compared to the symmetric airfoil is the addition of the second term. The result of this is that CL at alpha equals 0 Is not zero anymore. Instead, we have some alpha of zero lift, which is typically less than zero. So we can rewrite this as CL equals 2 pi alpha minus alpha L equals zero. Where alpha L equals zero is given by this integral. Actually by the negative of this integral because of the minus sign here. Uh, again if we look at the moment CM about the leading edge is negative pi over 2 A0 plus A1 minus A2 over 2 uh, where I'll get at what these a's are in a moment, and cm about the quarter chord um, is pi over 4 times a2 minus a1. So the quarter chord point's not the center of pressure for a cambered airfoil um, because the moment's not zero there. Now, these values of... Uh, a are not functions of alpha, so therefore the quarter chord moment is not a function of alpha, and so c over four point is the aerodynamic center, even though it's not the center of pressure. And that means we can come up with an expression for the location of the center of pressure, which is just C over 4, 1 plus pi over CL, A1 minus A2. So this varies with alpha through uh, the CL term. Now, had A naught in there earlier, which we haven't defined yet, which is just this. Alpha minus 1 over pi. So this is 
like uh, the angle of attack alpha minus an average camber angle. So this is kind of like an effective angle of attack. And for a1 and a2, we can write an is 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi dz dx cos n theta naught e theta naught where this dz dx is the slope of the camber line um, and can be expressed in terms of this theta. Um, the details here turn out to not be all that important because Ultimately, we're going to use these results um, and, and aren't going to work with the developing. So I'm not going to spend more time, not with, not work with their development. So I'm not going to spend more time on the mathematics. Um, I'm just going to, this is a bit of a reminder of where the formula is for the lift coefficient per unit span for uh, thin airfoil theory come from for both symmetric and cambered airfoils and how you would go about calculating uh, the zero lift angle of attack uh, if necessary.